It's pretty cool. Definitely cracked when I did that, but did you know that you can only really do what I just did with a fully hard boiled egg? It's kind of neat, it has something to do with physics. I don't, I don't know, the, the balance of power and the force from a chef's point of view. It's someone who's been cooking eggs for a long time. There's the best way to do this. I mean, as you guys can probably see, I have been playing around with different times for the eggs. And now I say different times because a lot of people confuse what you actually need to do to boil an egg. Do you start with cold water and then bring it up with the eggs in there? Which, no. Do you use room temperature eggs versus cold eggs? Do you use large eggs versus small eggs? Do you use quail eggs versus ostrich eggs? None of that matters. Except maybe the ostrich and the quail, that's gonna be very different. If you just wanna know how to boil an egg, insert egg into boiling water, remove egg from boiling water at 12 minutes, shock in ice water, peel, use for egg salad, because that's that's all it's good for. But each egg that I have here is vastly different. We have a four and a half minute egg, an eight and a half minute egg. This is a raw egg. And now we're going to make a 10 minute egg, a six minute egg, and a 12 minute egg. Our four and a half minute egg is done. I did this earlier, as well as our eight and a half minute egg. But now we have our three raw eggs, which we're gonna do six, 10, and 12. And here is your secret weapon. You may be wondering what a safety pin has to do with boiling eggs. Now, the answer is actually very simple when you think about it. Have you ever boiled an egg and then went to crack it and there's this huge cavity on the inside of the egg on the bottom? That's because there is a natural air pocket in the bottom of the egg. What we're doing is allowing air to escape the bottom of that egg without having the ability to crack the shell while it's boiling or at least preventing it as much as possible. This is also going to allow the egg to fully expand within the shell, stopping that little crater from even happening. That's how you get a nice egg. We're gonna take ground zero. This one won't be punctured so I can show you what happens. Hold your egg upright. You're gonna have the bottom of your egg. Flip it towards you. Take your safety pin or needle and gently start moving it back and forth. You're eventually going to puncture the shell. You don't wanna to go too deep, just like that. And now you have this little hole. Don't worry, the egg can't escape, it'll be fine. I went ahead and punctured my remaining eggs to make sure that they had that little bit of an air escape for when we boil these. Now this next part is super important. Use a spoon, slotted spoon, whatever you got to drop these eggs in the water. You want to be gentle with them. You don't want to actually have them hit the bottom from the surface. Otherwise they will crack. Set your first timer for six minutes and let it go. In the meantime, grab a container, fill it with ice and fill it with water. You're going to need some ice water to shock your eggs to immediately stop the cooking process. This is super important. Do not skip this step. We're gonna first remove our six minute egg and shock this in the ice water. We're going to set our timer for another four minutes to go ahead and finish our next 10 minute egg. If you're boiling multiple styles of egg at one time, go ahead and remove the earlier ones from your ice water and mark it with a Sharpie. I mark this for six minutes just so I know what I'm working with. Next is your 10 minute egg. Do the same thing, remove this from your boiling water and shock it. Set your timer for an additional two minutes for your final eggs. Now that your two minutes are up, remove your final two 12 minute eggs and shock those in ice water as well. And now we're ready for our experiment. So now we're gonna wait about five to 10 minutes for all of our eggs to fully cool down. You can do this ahead of time and just throw them in the fridge crack them when you need them. So now we have all of our eggs, but I think what most people have issue with is actually peeling your hard boiled egg, which uh, we're gonna talk about right now. So what I wanna talk about is how to actually peel these. Now, most people will take their egg, smash it into the cutting board. No more smashing into the cutting board. So you're gonna need a little bit of water to rinse off your eggs as you cook them. Don't bother doing it through running water, that's just kind of a waste. We're gonna take the back of a spoon and we're gonna gently start breaking the bottom of the egg. As you start tapping the bottom of the egg, follow it all the way to the top, gently cracking the egg. You just wanna get a small section of the egg actually cracked rather than cracking it all over the place. This is gonna be really nice for later. Start to peel back some of the smaller bits and you're gonna be ending up with two half shells essentially. You're gonna be able to remove these half shells all at once without really making your life difficult. Give this a little bit of dunk in your water and your egg is nice and clean. On this 12 minute egg without the puncture, we do have a little bit of a cavity here, but it's not that big of a deal because it is a hard boiled egg. Now we're gonna go down the line and start cracking all of our eggs, but if you're doing this experiment, what you'll start to notice is the further you progress down the line with the least cooked egg, you're going to start to run into problems with peeling them regardless of the method that you choose. Look at the six minute egg, look how squishy and beautiful it is. This is my favorite. 
Now the four and a half minute egg, this is going to prove to be the biggest pain to peel. Because the white isn't fully coagulated, you are going to start tearing the egg as you peel it. Four and a half minutes, six minutes, eight and a half minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and 12 minutes. Now by far the most stable, and I think the best egg is between a five and a six minute egg. This guy, you can feel that the yolk is still super runny on the inside, but it is a very firm white. Whereas our four and a half minute eggs, I can't really pick those up, so I'm just gonna scramble that into some rice and eat it. But now the real question, question is, what is inside of each of those eggs besides, besides yolk? First up are two 12 minute eggs. These are cooked all the way through and they're a little chalky, but they are really nice for making things like egg salad or egg salad sandwiches. Next is our 10 minute egg. With the 10 minute egg, it is still cooked all the way through, but you see just a slight jamminess to the yolk. This is really nice. I prefer this to the 12 minute egg. Now we have the eight minute egg. Here's our 10 minute egg versus the eight and a half minute egg. You can see when I do this to the eight minute egg, it has a little bit more give. This one is a little bit more dry. Here's the 10, here's the eight. 10, eight, 10, eight, 10, eight, 10, eight. And now for the six minute egg. But hold on, before we cut that thing open, this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for this moment in this video to really explain to you my love for the six minute egg. This is by far the most versatile of all of them. Why? You can recook this, like right now. Seasoned flour, egg wash, panko, breading station, hot oil, six minute egg, getting a bath. Dredge your six minute egg in your seasoned flour. Place it into your egg wash, which is just egg and milk. Don't use your dry set hand for this. With your dry hand, drop it into your panko and then do the whole process over again. We're gonna double dredge this. We're gonna deep fry this in a bit of canola oil at 350 degrees. We're not gonna fry this for too long, just about a minute, 30 seconds or so on each side, just to make sure that the panko is actually cooked. Look at how golden brown and delicious. This makes me so happy. Uh, I. Oh, hit this guy with just a touch of salt just to make sure it's nicely seasoned. You could eat the egg as is, but I had some hot rice ready, so we're gonna go with some hot rice. Place that sexy, beautiful looking egg right on top. Hit it with just a touch of soy sauce, or a lot of soy sauce, but I just, just a little bit. And you gotta get that Q pie mayo, that Japanese mayo, just, it's so good on eggs. Hit it with a touch of hoisin for that sweetness, and a good sprinkling of furukake. And look at, look, I'm so excited. Just look at it. And now for the magic. This is the undisputed king of eggs for me. Winner! I mean, come on. The six minute egg, it's crispy, it's salty, it's everything you need. But the best part is you can keep these in the fridge for whenever you wanna make one. They last four or five days. You can eat them on a piece of toast, deep fry them, put them on rice, whatever you wanna do. It doesn't get any better than this, it's so good. My name is Chef PK, here on Basics. I hope I taught you something today. Get subscribed, check out one of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. So good. Crunchy, creamy, salty. Oh, it's so much.